find yourself a booth, order up a cold one. This is the Spring Bowl. Hey everybody, welcome to the Spring Bar. Glad to have you here. I am Florida Mike, sitting today with my co-host, KC and Joe on location. Gentlemen, how are you doing today? I, I could be better. I'm slightly hungover and I've been doing battle with the toilet for a little <laughs> bit here. Remember, uh, I'm, I'm remember still when you, yeah. remember we were talking with Michael and you had that Jack and Coke and I'm like, oh, that tastes like my 20s. Is that <laughs> what got you sick? <laughs> no, no. I mean... Not at all. Um, I went to a, a local brewery here, and I really didn't have that many. I think, I think it was four. <laughs> I mean, four. I didn't have that many, Officer. Honestly, <laughs> I didn't drink that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Still, I had enough to where I woke up, and I was like, damn it, that was stupid. <laughs> well, there's four, but then there's like a micro local brewery four, which is. Right. Yeah, no, yeah, they were not yeah. like the, uh, like, five, they were more than 5% alcohol each, so. Right, and and, and the, yeah. the four that you were drinking were growlers, so I, I get it. Yeah, that. yeah. See, I'm, <laughs> I'm up at about 8,000 feet, so. Ooh. So, yeah, please explain to us, uh, the listeners, what you're, oh, what you're up to. Where, where are you at? We're, we're at the mountain. We're, we're in the snow. It's wonderful. So you live in California, Joe. I do live in California. And it is currently what temperature outside your window right now? Um, Ish, roughly? 30s. Okay. Mid 30s. I think the, the high today was 36. The uh, sun hasn't gone down yet, so the temperatures aren't going to drop. It's supposed to snow tonight. I think the low tomorrow is um, two. See, I'm also from a warm state. But never have I ever said to myself, oh, I think for fun, I'm going to go freeze my ass off in some snow in the mountains. Well, but see, <laughs> so you recognize that Florida is, it has like no weather other than hurricanes. So California, <laughs> California, we have, we have mountains, we have surf, we have desert, we have, we've got it all. You have winter and fire season. We do. We do. There's about eight different seasons because in the, the Santa Ana is uh, on Thursday. So nice hot winds blowing in from the desert after all of the rain. So we went from flooding to drought. <laughs> and now I'm in the snow. This is the full biblical experience. It, 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 you know what? It's, it's, it's one of those, it is one of those moments. Oh, goodness. All right. We got to do the wrist check. Uh, okay. Why don't you go first? Because you're going to be at least interesting. Do, well, do you want me to go first, or do you want me to, to lift everybody's spirits after the same humdrum they've been looking at for the last 30 days? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. So I am wearing something different. It's, it's a watch that never gets any love when I post it. This is my Dolce & Gabbana. It's the DW0193 Navajo. This is probably Navajo? the Navajo. Cultural appropriation. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> Probably the best Dolce & Gabbana watch they ever made in the men's line. Uh, so much so that when these were retailing new, they were going for a pretty penny. Uh, you could buy a replica of them. You can still find them today on eBay for around five or 600 bucks. So we're talking about a knockoff Dolce & Gabbana? Knock well, off. not this one. This is the original. Well, I get but it. You I'm could, just, I'm just trying you to could get knockoffs of it. Yeah. Just try to wrap my brain around that that whole concept um. <laughs> but it's it's a nice watch it's a nice dial layout the case is nice it's not gaudy and overdone like a lot of their other stuff is it's it's a good sports watch chronograph it's uh what's, what's the look 20, 20. it's All a right. so so casey you got to send him one of your uh navajo Racers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It, it's, we, this, this has to happen. Well, this is, again, how we got canceled. <laughs> yeah. But here's here's the weird... Here, this is the quirky part about this watch. It's a Seiko... It's it's a VD54, VK54. Oh, yeah, I forget yeah. exactly what it yeah, is. V, yeah, the VK. VK. It's a 24-hour sub-dial at the 3 o'clock. Um, the chronograph 
seconds is at the subdial at the six o'clock and the 60 minute counter is at the nine o'clock. The running seconds is the actual large second hand, which is a little backwards from how chronographs usually operate. Right. <clears throat> so this goes, it does its thing. Let's just say that you stop timing it at 25 minutes in. You hit the reset button on any normal quartz chronograph, all the hands would quick reset right back to zero. This, however, rewinds. So it goes backwards through all uh, minutes you just counted. Okay. <laughs> so if you stop it at like 45 minutes, it could take you a good minute and a half to rewind all the way through the 45 minutes. And it, it how, okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think <laughs> I uh, had a Seiko with a similar movement and it, it, it did do that. I yeah, I imagine it's a, it's a pretty basic, like a cheaper and Seiko watch movement chronograph type thing. It's so cool. Like, I it, it's I've, weird. I've yeah, never, I mean, it's cool. I've never seen one. I've never heard of it. That's um, awful. <laughs> it is it's painful when you have to reset. <clears throat> so that's what I'm wearing today. So, hey, gentlemen, Joe, what do you got on? <laughs> I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess KC's that he's wearing a Breitling. Right. That's my Damn. guess. Spot on, good sir. Wow. Oh. Like, you you want wow. to guess, guess what I'm wearing? I guess? Go on. Hey, look at that. Oh, the minute repeater. Yeah. <laughs> Which is about as gimmicky as the uh, flyback thing you were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So what it, what does it say on your dial? Does it say minute repeater or do you have the, the what's the other markings? The certified uh, chronograph? I think the other one just says aerospace. Um, but this one says minute repeater on it. Yours is the minute repeater. Okay. I mean, it's still kind of cool. Right. I mean, yeah. Um, the, the coolest part of, if we're going to talk quartz technology here, is the fact that they went and spent the time and money to make this an officially certified quartz chronometer. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. And uh, God dang it, do I, I just can't wait for this to be over with. <laughs> you guys and your silly one watch challenge. Uh, it's rough, <laughs> man. It's rough. I'm not sure what my go. first, uh, well, one of the, the pieces from our today's topic is going to be the first watch I rock. Uh, on the oh, yeah. first of the month. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Joe, tell everybody about your deep sea chronograph. <laughs> hey, I'm wearing a deep sea chronograph. <laughs> yeah, the little window on your uh jacket's kind of cool. It is kind of cool, right? It's, it allows you to see exactly how sweaty you are. Yeah. <laughs> and what you know what the relative humidity is inside your jacket. So, so <laughs> any moisture buildup on the inside of that crystal? Oh, not on the crystal, no. This the watch is nope. watch is really so it was relatively it was relatively tight. This is this oh, okay. is my thing though. Like I normally come up here when we go when we go to the mountains, I usually bring something quartz. I usually bring something that's waterproof because you know we're in the snow and if you fall and you gotta go hands in to get yourself out of the snow. And you know, we if, if you crash, have a run in with a tree maybe maybe a vintage chronograph isn't the right idea to have. So normally I would bring like two or three different watches and I'd rotate through and all that rest. But this time I brought some extra straps and I'm wearing a vintage chronograph on the mountain. Well, you're there until, what'd you tell me, Tuesday? I'm here till the 31st. Oh, 31st. Wow. See, you can't even change while you're there. I, I brought uh -huh. one watch. Womp, womp. Gonna ride it out. You didn't bring a G Shock or something? I I don't even have a stunt backup watch. <laughs> I know. I know. It's a it's a frightening prospect. I'm not sure. Oh how man. That sucks to be you guys. Because see, so the what are okay, what are we talking about today? What's the topic? Tell us what the topic is, and then I'll tell you what I was gonna say. New watches. New watch yours because we haven't done one for the last couple of episodes because we've been chock full of all sorts of other exciting information like the new lunar pilots and the astronaut and the uh, astronaut's gonna be sick. Astronaut, yep. Astronaut's yep. gonna be really interesting, man. Who, and then we had the we had the Foster Watch guys on for our first mm -hmm. episode, so it's been since last year that we've talked new watches. 
So we're we're talking new watches. But what's nice Maybe about this last year since I've worn a different watch. So you know. <laughs> but uh, what's nice about this is I've actually been able to enjoy all of my new watches. I've been able to play with them and put them on, and take wrist shots, and get thoughts about what they're like. And you poor suckers are just so staring at them. <laughs> what uh, what brand of wine are you getting, Joe? What brand of wine am I getting? I don't know. No, no, yeah, I mean from. From Mike, because I'm pretty sure we recorded him saying. You recorded me uh, saying that I was going to fail very early on. Well, right. That's what I mean. It's true. It's true. What brand of wine am I getting for (laughs) writing out the. Oh, shit. I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> I, I, it took a second, but it clicked. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's going to be sweet. Be sweet. <laughs> well, hold on. When I won, you sent me your wine of choice. So now I yeah. got to send you my wine of choice. That's, that's, that's what it was. Because you know, your, your wine sucked and my wine didn't. It, it did not suck. There was did nothing you, wrong with my did choice. Did you enjoy my wine? I did, but I also yes, enjoyed the did. one that I picked out. I'm going to give you a bottle of five buck Chuck. <laughs> All right, and well, you're going to enjoy it. I, yeah, I will. You, you're I mean, going to be providing I mean, at this point a bottle of anything, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to explode. Oh gosh! All right, let's get into it. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> am I up? Am I going to go first? You can go yeah, send it. It's, all right. Where do I start? I have, so within the first 13 days of January, I have gotten in my door five watches. Now, one of which wasn't actually mine, uh, but four of them were. So, sorry, had a te- technical difficulty there. Uh, where did I put all my watches at? Oh gosh, here's one. Okay, so we're going to start with this. This was a trade. I had a uh, Bulva Accutron. It was a service award watch. It was actually the very first vintage watch I ever bought. Hmm. And enjoyed it, wore it. It was great. Hummed right along, kept perfect time. No problems with it. The problem really was interesting. Really, interesting, like there's applique on the dial. It wasn't stamped, right? There was a, a like a triangle. yeah. It, it was an applied marker. Was a triangle. Was the logo for the company yeah. that <clears throat> gave the the award, um, Deco Corporation, which is an aftermarket automotive parts uh, company. It was still around actually, um, but it was given as award in 1973 uh, for 25 years. So. Do the math backwards. That's how long that gentleman worked there. Uh, but the problem was, is, is the collection has gotten so big, and I have the Accutron Q, and I wear that more, and it just kind of sat there, and it didn't see a whole lot of wrist time. So somebody that we know on Instagram was kind of uh, selling some stuff off, and he had a watch up, very cheap, and I said, hey, I have something I think you might like. And uh, we kind of talked about it, sent some pictures back and forth, and he's like, sure, yeah, I'll take that. So what I got in return was a NOS. That's 19, so sweet. This is a 75 or 76. I forget. I, I haven't looked it up to see what it's actually called, although there's probably not going to be a name because, as we know, when you get that far into the books, they just put numbers on them and not really names. <laughs> um, but it's a, a no-date manual wine, three-hand. It's gold, silver dial, applied chunky markers, black, Pylon seconds hand. I mean, signed bracelet. I mean, it's it's all original to the point that it has the original hang tags in the original box. I mean, this thing is phenomenal. It's really it's good. Just, yeah, this is and really, really those cool. you're not going to wear kind of watches? Yeah, kind of. Well, but, but it also, it's this weird spot because it has the original bracelet. And talk about the bracelet. Huh. So, yeah, the... It, it's, I don't even know how you would describe that. It's like a, a very restricted movement brick style bracelet. Hmm. Yeah. It, it is the best way I can describe stone. it. 
they feel awful. <laughs> Cobblestone, yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel the greatest. Luckily, my wrist is just large enough where it's not, it doesn't sit real funky because of the lack of, I mean, you can't take that bracelet and you can't make a tight curve out of it. I mean, it's, it's, it yeah. is what it is. That's what you get. And if it doesn't yeah. fit, too bad, so sad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's cool. I want to wear it, but it's so perfect. It is so perfect. And it has all the, I mean, all the original everything. And the, something like that, the full kit, gold yeah. bull of a nice condition is real hard to come by. So I almost want to just kind of keep it I think you did, you did really well on that. I think you did really well on that. Yeah. That was a, that was a pretty fair trade. You might have come out ahead. I feel like I probably did on that one, but he's, you know, he's perfectly happy with the, the Accutron and I know he likes those sort of things. So he'll use it more. Uh, in fact, I traded him um, a Seiko. Remember that, that one vintage mechanical Seiko that I have, I traded him my Invicta 1953 for it and he wears it all the time. So yeah. um, <clears throat> moving on, I have, I have a, a watch roll now because this came with one of my other new watch alerts. Let me unroll it here. Open it up. Fancy. It is a three-slot watch roll. And in slot number one is my brand new Dan Henry 1975. All right. Let's talk for a second. Okay. We were in the One Watch Challenge. It happened. Yeah. It was going. Yes. You had not broken yet. No. What day of January did you place your order for that watch? January 1st. What day did that watch arrive? Oh, I don't remember. Shortly thereafter. At which point, Mike broke. <laughs> I mean, so, in my defense, <laughs> I was told to buy this watch. I wasn't going to buy it. But I was told to. This, so You're blaming this, your girlfriend? I am. Maybe yeah. your girlfriend for your failure in our one watch. No, 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 no. Because it was her fault entirely, completely and utterly her fault. She's like, just buy it. She's like, you know, you want it. Just buy it. You have the money. Just buy it. So this was bought with my, my, uh, a CAA money. Huh. Huh. So sold the CAA. That money just sat there for a while. And th so these came out in, in November of last year, I think, uh, yeah. maybe September, October, somewhere around there. And they're really cool. They're, they're really cool. They come it's in. Classic skin diver, man. I mean, he nailed it. They really nailed that one. But what's neat about it is this is the first watch that he's done that you can completely customize. You get to choose from the case size, which is 37 or 39 millimeters. You get to choose the dial color. You get to choose um, the bezel. You can either get a, a engraved steel bezel, or I have the um, the sapphire um, bezel. Kind of looks like a a uh, uh, what are they called, Joe? Bakelite. Bakelite bezel. Thank you. Uh, um, you get to pick the strap that goes with it. You can get a bracelet if you want to. Uh, what else is, is, I think that's about it. So you have all those choices that you can go through. So you're not limited to, this is what I made. This is what you buy. It's here's your options, make it the way that you want it to personalize it a little bit. So it, it's really cool. So I've got 37 mil. Oh, and the movement, you can get an automatic movement or you can get the mega quartz. Mega quartz is the way to go on that one. Yeah. So I spec mine 37 millimeters. I have the Sapphire bezel. Um, the orange dial, I went with the orange tropics rally strap and I have the mecha course movement, which is four ticks per second. And this thing is really cool. It wears really well. It's super, super thin. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it, it's quartz. This thing will just keep on going. No date. Oh, that was another option. You can have a date or no date. So, I mean, all these options, you can spec these out. It, it's really cool the way that they did this release this time. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Oh, hold on. Okay. So we have a a mutual friend, a listener of the show, um, who currently resides out of country. 
on a military base. And he, he reached out to us originally because his watches. Now he does the work. He does really good work too. And he videos all his stuff. Every time he does a watch, he's got the video of him disassembling it, cleaning it, put it back together, adjusting it, all that kind of stuff. He, he doesn't, he, he's quick to claim that he's not a watchmaker. He's not professionally trained, anything like that. You know, he's learned all this on his own, but he does really good work. He reached out to me one day and said, Hey, you know, I was listening to a show and, and it said that you had wanted to try an art deco piece, but you were kind of on the fence of buying one. He didn't really want to, cause you weren't sure if you're going to like it. He goes, I have a bunch of them. He says, if you want pick out one and I'll service it for you and make it nice and send it to you. He says, just pay me what I paid in cost for it. He says, they're all around 20 bucks a piece and I'll just send it. He says, that way you have one. They didn't pay a whole lot of money for it. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. So he sent me a picture and there was probably 30 or 40 art deco watches all over his workbench. And so I zoomed in and I'm looking through and I picked out two or three of them. And I said, you surprise me, you know, whichever one. So he's got this one. Um, it is, I picked out a 1950 uh, Bulova Academy Award ZZ. Slightly different because when you can't maybe, hear you. Maybe. Well, yeah. So it's a little different because this one has a lot of filigree around the case edges. Where when you look up the ZZ, it doesn't have all that. It's a weird space to be in. Like when you're getting that vintage <sighs> Bulova, really vintage Bulova, because they did the same dial with different cases, same cases. It, and it can be the subtle subtlety of like, you know, the, the shape of the minutes track and maybe the seconds hand. It gets, it gets so weird. It gets so weird. Like I'm good with the designation. I think that ZZ works for that watch. I think it's beautiful. But mm -hmm. my Bulova might disagree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my bullet tends to disagree with a lot of stuff I have to say, um, but it's really cool. I like it. I like the numerals on the dial. I like the case itself. I like the filigree, the scalloped edge. It has the signed crown on it, which I thought was really cool because how often do you get a, you know one of these Art Deco watches with the signed crown still? Um, fully serviced. It runs great. Keeps time. Um, he's got it on this black leather strap that he sent it with. Uh, but I do want to find a gold bracelet, but I think this thing will look killer on a, a vintage gold bracelet. Um, but it's really <laughs> cool. So I know this has kind of been a, a you know, a, a controversial topic amongst us, but I like it. I like it. I, I like the way it looks. I like looking at it. It's beautiful art piece and I'm trying to wear it. Um, I, I've worn it a few times now and I'm, it, it's cool. So I, haven't fully made up my mind yet, but it's doing well so far. Told you. I told you, right? You know, Casey, you've got that vintage Bulova, right? Yeah. Hey, those little watches, man, they're, hey, they're really good. They're much better than you would expect. And, yeah, I think the, I mean, as far as the controversy goes, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm on board with it. I like them. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's, well, it's always a question like the size because it's so small and it would be considered a lady's watch today. But it was a well, it's not even it, it, it never was the size for me. I mean, I, I haven't actually measured it out, but let me just put it on my wrist here and you guys can see. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's a nice it's a longer size, which yeah, I like. It's, it's a little it's a little yeah, bigger. Great, but I guess the controversial part was, you know, my saying that I don't like Art Deco watches. Everybody thought that I hated the Art Deco watch. It's not that I didn't like it. It's just, you know, the Art Deco doesn't fit my collecting style, doesn't fit the way I wear a watch. But it's cool. I, I do like it. I enjoy it and quite a bit. And here we are. And here we are. So in the box, he, he sent me a picture of the shipping label. Uh, and on the shipping label is the customs form. And it said watch and snacks. And I'm like, ooh. The package comes with snacks. And he says, oh, yeah, because I put these together for everybody every time I send something out, just a little bit of Japan, send it out oh, to wherever. Cool. In the box with the watch and the snacks was also another surprise in the way of a ladies Seiko piece. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's real nice. That, I, so I don't know is, that I like it more than the Bolova, but it's up there. That's a really, that's a really nice watch. 
It's really cool. It's an automatic. It's a day date black dial, um, silver, you know, accent pieces, white seconds hand. This thing runs great. Uh, keeps really good time. Has the original Seiko signed bracelet, and it has the clasp is a spring clasp. Hmm. You're not looking, Joe. I, I think I've gotten one of those before, and the wrist cheese to dig out of that. Uh, oh yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to take some soaking to clean this one up. But what's really, really cool about this is it has. It's hard to see on this camera, but we'll put it on the picture. It has the kanji date wheel. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's pretty I cool. Like kanji date wheels. Yep. <clears throat> All right, so that takes care of everything that I have in hand. Now, the last watch that I had gotten in did not actually belong to me. It belonged to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad also reached out to me one day, just completely out of the blue. And he says, hey, I was listening to one of the episodes, and the, you know, you're talking about the moon swatches. He goes, I have one. Yeah, if you yeah. want, I'll send it out to you so you can see what it's all about. Yeah, he and I were talking about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, Mike really wants to try it out. So, boom. So, yeah, so he sends it out. It comes in the mail. I got really excited. I open it up, and I'm like, okay, <clears throat> before I start this, I know I'm going to be met with opposition from the two of you. So just hear me out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I open it up. I open the box. And I immediately understood what the hype was all about. It's if you take the watch for what it is, it's very cool. What is it? It is a fun way to have a Speedmaster, dare I say, replica on your wrist so you can appreciate the shape an overall design of an Omega Speedmaster at an affordable Wouldn't price. Oh, see, speed? no, I was like, I was with you until you said affordable price. <laughs> they are not. What? No, okay. How much is an Omega Speedmaster brand new? What does it retail for? Oh, it might be like five, six thousand. Okay. How much does a, a Moon Swatch retail for? Oh, shit. $280. Three hundred dollars or something outrageous like that. Two sixty plus tax. Two eighty. How much? Is way, this way too much. Itself? Because at an affordable go, price, you drop six thousand on the the actual Speedmaster, you get an actually serviceable watch. But for your two hundred eighty dollars, when that thing <laughs> dies, it's done. But Not see. Wrong. Can, he's uh, okay, no, he's not wrong. When the, when the movement dies, you can either cut it open and replace it and then seal that, that unsealable case back, or you can toss it. Here's the thing that I keep saying is my Tiso 516 Quartz Chronograph has the exact same movement that is in the Moon Swatch. And I've had it for 13 years now, and it is still going. So I have no problem making a $260 investment on a watch that's going to last me 13 plus years because I paid more than that for my TSO. Now, here's the thing. Everybody complained about how loud this watch is. Oh, the watch is so loud. Oh, you can hear it ticking from a mile away. Again, I've got the, the watch with the same movement in it. I can't hear it tick. However, when I open the box, I can hear the fucking thing tick. Yeah. <laughs> it really was loud. Yeah, no, I mean, I was talking to Army in Time um, this week when I went on the show, um, yeah. and that was my that was my hot take. Um, and again, it's it's not that I don't like the product itself; I just have issue with it costing what it does. I think at one hundred and fifty dollars, there's no way they can't offer it for one hundred and fifty. Uh, 200 if you really want to stretch and flex the Omega name and say that's what you mean. You know what, though? It, it's, it's reasonably priced, and I'll tell you why. Because it is the watch of 2022. Yeah. There is no other watch that got that amount of hype that year, and people are still talking about it. Yeah. And 
they will come out with other releases. They're going to come out with other variations and things like that. You know that's going to happen because this thing was such a smashing success. They'd be stupid not to. Yeah. You get you get the excitement. You get the fun. You get to look at your wrist and it says Omega on it. It says Speedmaster on it. You get to take part in the Speedy Tuesday photos and all that. I mean, really, the, the fun and enjoyment that you get for $260. I mean, I've spent that much on watches that I don't like. <laughs> you know, so it it's not a bad watch. It's for what it is, it's not bad. Now, if you are going to buy the watch and think that it's a Speedmaster replacement, you are going to be sorely disappointed. Yeah. But it's it's a a companion piece if you're a Speedmaster owner and you want to collect, you know, all these little things that go with it. If you have, you know, the Speedmaster pins and in, in Apollo 15 memorabilia to go with your Speedmaster, this is going to be something that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes. As you've been waxing nostalgic about a watch that the $260 watch that has a $100 strap. <laughs> <laughs> look get away from the strap because i don't like that strap it, it, the strap is more comfortable than i thought it was going to be i was very surprised at how it did wear um but i immediately changed it for something else Bro, so, those aftermarket straps for that are so expensive the thick rubber ones they're like 300 dollars or some crap Probably no you can get them there, there's a company that's got them for 49 bucks yeah but even still, it's fit, you're paying fifty bucks for a strap for a plastic watch. Well, listen, Joe, you're not required to like it. No, there I are am other, not. other watches for you to spend your money on. Indeed. <laughs> now, all that said, would I actually buy one for myself? Yes, I would. Yes, you would. Yes, I would, and I would pay three hundred and fifty dollars for it. Woo! All right, hey. So but, anybody who's got a mood swatch that you want to let go of for $350, Mike's your boy. <laughs> but I, I want either the, the the moon or Mars. The the other ones I'm not. Uh, the moon would be pretty cool. I, yeah, I the other ones I'm not interested in. The Mars, all right, the Mars is cool for the Alaska project. And, yeah. Uh, Wait till Fratello does it. Fratello is going to do a, a white version of that, and that'll be it. That wait till be, they come out wait till they come out with that james bond version oh my god that would be pretty sick <laughs> that's pretty cool like a seamaster speedmaster mashup i mean it sounds I would, ridiculous i would pay, cool i would pay 260 dollars <laughs> see hey it's all perception well that's what this entire hobby is for sure yeah I'm gonna start my own podcast now. I can't uh, do it anymore. Uh, so uh, I don't. I don't have the watch anymore. Actually, it went back in the mail today. I, I sent it back to him, um, but I enjoyed it when I had it. I wore it. I, I, you know, I got to see what the hype was about. I got to experience it. There are some QC, you know, issues with it. If you look at it, you can tell it's injection molded, and you know they didn't shave some of the edges down. And yeah, and there, you can tell it's dog shit, but. <laughs> There, there's things that could have been done better. Uh, but overall, I, I was happy with it. I'm glad I got to experience it. I'm glad I finally got to really see what it was all about. And it's not bad. I, it's not bad. Oh, my. No, I can't show that as a new watch. Never mind. <laughs> all right. KC, it's your turn. Uh, well, real quick, I'm going to shout my father out real quick. Uh, he's cold. Dot, or Cold underscore war underscore patriot, cold war patriot uh, on Instagram. So he's got some pretty interesting um, watches. He's actually a artist by trade, but uh, infantryman by choice. Um, so photography was what he majored in in college, and then he decided he wasn't going to make money doing that, so he took up uh, a rifle and started killing people. So. <laughs> As you do. Uh, yeah. as, as you it, 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 it goes to say that like sometimes being an artist really makes you want to kill somebody so, yeah I, i'm sure the, you know the I, legal way of going postal 
It, ran, yeah. it helps. It helps. Um, okay, so the One Watch Challenge has been the worst financial decision of my life. Um, I don't know what it is. Like, I enjoy this, but then I'm like, oh, I want a new watch. So I'm on eBay, and I'm buying new watches. And then they come, and then I can't really do anything with them. So I then I buy hey, another watch. So real quick, come February 1st, I'll buy that from you cheap. What? <laughs> Oh, uh, the freaking aerospace! Oh yeah, yeah. You'll get the uh, the co-host discount. Yeah, the exactly. friends and family. Um, but all right, so let's uh let's go through. So I've I've always kind of been looking at tuxedo dials, and uh, yeah, I wanted to get one. I was looking at some Omegas and other stuff like that. Um, but then I came across. Uh, this for sale, it's a, uh, so cool. I don't know what, what year it is. Uh, let's see what the code is on the back. I think it's, uh, M M nine. I don't know if anyone knows that. Really? 69. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 69. That's all. Awesome. I totally would have thought that was later. That's it. That's I, I would have gone with early seventies. Yeah. Well, I guess it's kind of early seventies ish, like you're sixty nine, kind of getting close to that. Um, uh, well, that's that's late six, Casey. <laughs> is that what you said? I thought you meant seventies. <laughs> no, sixty nine would be late sixties, not early seventies. No, not uh, well. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, <laughs> I guess but, you're uh, still hung over. You're still hung over, <laughs> aren't you? No, but I mean, as far as like car designs and other things, you know. Your late sixties and your early seventies can kind of blend together, and I imagine watches are probably about the same. Um, so it's got, I think you guys refer to it as like onyx, little blackish inserts on the markers. Um, what's cool though is the, I don't know, man. This is a Caravelle. This is supposed to be your drugstore run of the mill watch, but these markers, the uh, yeah. the angles oh, at yeah. which they're cut. I mean, holy crap. Um, the, the style of the numerals, too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah these numerals, they're, they're applied. They come up to such, they're like essentially pyramids. The way okay. they're stacked. And, yeah. So and I'm, I'm, looking at the, well. I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at the picture. Does Was there something around the date window? Yeah, it's, so it's framed, but it's also not a square. It's yeah. tapered. Yeah. So... I mean, it's just super oh, it's cool. tapered, huh? Yeah. Um, I think it's a 32 mil, so it is smaller, but still super cool. I've got it on the Vario Harris Tweed strap. Um, no, I, I, think I think this is the first watch package. I had that really wears this strap well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you showed that to me, and I was like, yeah, jealous. You did, yeah, I mean, you I, I definitely – uh, if you want to do a swap for a little bit, I'll send it out to you for one of your pieces and maybe like a, a mill ships or something like that. We can talk. Cool. Talk. Um, all right. So next thing I, uh, I hate long jeans. Like <laughs> there's not a single design where I'm like, Oh, that's cool. So I was like, you know what? Let me give it a shot. Let me go find a long jeans out there that I like. And uh, being a vintage guy, obviously I found a vintage one. And so this is a uh, two-tone Longines Conquest. And uh, it's got a really cool kind of striped-ish dial. Um, it's got a pylon seconds hand, true to vintage form. Um, and it's two-tone. And I ha I'd never really owned a two-tone watch, so that's what I was kind of going for. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone. So I'm going to try out. Uh, this is its uh, bracelet. It's like a, a Submariner oh, okay. style bracelet. Is it the original bracelet? I don't think so. It's not branded, but I don't know Longines well enough to be able to say all their stuff came branded. What year is that supposed to be? Ooh, yeah. probably. Uh, well, I would probably say this is early 70s, so about 69. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> so is it is it two tone in that the bezel is gold and everything else is silver, or the markers gold as well? Um, 
I, yeah, only the bezel is uh, gold toned. Okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. I like that. I like the it, the the texture dial on that is different. Um, yeah, yeah, texture dial is cool. Um, and again, the the pylon seconds hand is kind of cool. Just, but it's not bright or anything like that. So you could tell it's it's of its time, but it flows well with the watch. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's a really good. It's a neat little package. You know, you can see that the all of those those sort of those dress watch design cues. I think the bezel is fantastic. Yeah, you did really well with that one. Yeah, so I mean, again, there are a couple of modern large jeans that I think are kind of fun. Uh, they have a couple of moon face models that are cool, but there's nothing I've ever seen that like, hey, I need to have that in my collection. So, um, but the next thing, I I don't know, maybe I was drunk as well, um, but I decided. Normally, my rule is don't buy it if it comes from India. Um, <laughs> So I, I bought this and um, we talked about it for uh, like, I think our Christmas. Uh, yeah, I remember yeah. you mentioning that. Yeah, so this is, this came from India. It's in like pristine condition. It came on a metal bracelet. Um, I think I paid $20 ship. <laughs> um, it's a quartz Seiko tank. Uh, no seconds hand, so you don't get a stuttering tick. It's just hour and minutes, so you, mm -hmm. you couldn't tell. this If you didn't know watches, you wouldn't know that this is a quartz. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's your simple tank homage that says Seiko on it. It's got a really cool dial. Um, it's kind of got, I don't know, a waiting pool effect to it. Um, it's, yeah. it's for, for being a Mumbai special, it's a nice-looking dial. I'll give you that. So, I mean, I don't even know if Seiko actually produced these lines. <laughs> but, I mean, you can find a shitload of them on eBay. Um, the yeah. the case looks good, too, man. It's not. It, it's, yeah, it's not. For 20 bucks, you can't go wrong. And it looks real good on that brown leather that you have. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I had it on that Ukrainian thing earlier, I think, before we started recording for the audience. Uh, I love... I'm, I'm here to support the Ukrainians, but it just didn't work on that. No. Yeah. I, I have I have a similar strap. It goes on only a couple of watches because it just doesn't exactly work with everything else. I I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. that that's a hard one. That's hard. I think you put it on your um the G Shock Square, and it looks pretty good on that. It does. Yeah, it works really well on that too. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, that kind of makes sense, you know, given yeah. the current <laughs> situation. Um, oh, yeah. So I still have three more watches to get through. These next two are kind of the same. They are um, Casio. Wow. Yeah, these are Casio um, Pulse Check watches. Um, oh, this is the, the is. first okay. model they, they put out. Okay. And then the other one's a later one. So it's like a photo um, sensor? Your finger goes on it? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I haven't figured out how to use these watches yet. Um, but, yeah, it'll, it'll let you know what your blood pressure is. That's weird, man. I, I love the Casio stuff that just has weird gadgets to it. Like the camera watch I have. Yeah. Um, the TV <laughs> remote ones are pretty sweet. Here's, here's the funny part about these, these old watches like this. Wait, your smart watch today... It will have a camera in it. It'll it'll tell you all your vital signs, information. You know, it'll track your steps. But uh -oh. back in, in the 80s, your watch did one thing. It, it would either tell you what the temperature is outside, or it would tell you what your pulse is, or it would take a picture. But you couldn't have it do more than one function. <laughs> it's yeah. fantastic. Um, all right, so that's this. Um Let's move on to this guy. So, so is that a is that an Invicta box? It, it, it like is an Invicta box, box. and uh, I mean, See, I guess Tiffany, Tiffany has their bright, their blue. Rolex has got their green. <laughs> and Invicta has puke yellow. Oh yeah, I mean, everyone knows if you're a watch person. Shit, even if you're not a watch person, you've seen an Invicta before. <laughs> um, 
So before you unveil this, and 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 Joe and I legitimately have no clue what this is. We've not seen it. Did you buy this new or was this a used purchase? It was. A, it's a used watch. Okay. Pre uh, and you guys had made some guesses. Uh, I think highlights were a Ronald McDonald one. And some <laughs> Which was not an Invicta. I'm still what waiting can, for that. What I can only imagine is like a 60 millimeter tie dye chronograph <laughs> slash. You could be dazzled. Jason. I'm pretty sure it dispenses barbed wire. I, as it should. And, and bubble gum. <laughs> and uh, I've and made more Mike, sensible guesses. Yeah, Mike had, I didn't know Invicta. Well, he threw up a field watch. Super cool. Um, and then the uh, the new uh, Rolex uh, Explorer homage thing looks pretty interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And then the surfboard, which I think is a, a ripoff of full of us, probably. So, I, I had a guess. <laughs> So funny thing about that surfboard, I came this close to buying one. Oh, really? <laughs> it, 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 it looks like a chronograph. It has two sub dials. It has pushers uh -oh. and everything. It is not a chronograph. What? <laughs> what is well, it? So sorry. the 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 three o'clock sub dial is a twenty four hour sub dial. Okay. That, that goes along with the time. So if it's 10 a.m., it, it's oh, telling no. you that it's 10 a.m. and 24-hour time. The left sub-dial is an adjustable 24-hour. So it's essentially a second time zone. And the, the, <laughs> the chronograph pushers is how you set the second time zone. You either push the top, oh, busher, no. the top button to an advance or the bottom button to, to go backwards. Oh, so man. is the chronograph needle or is that just... That's the, that's the running seconds hand. Oh, seconds. God. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> so it looks sense. like a surfboard chronograph, but it's totally not. <laughs> the only thing that would have made that better if it was been like a day date. And that, and that was the day, <laughs> it was the day day complication in the sub. Oh man. Wow, that's awful. Now I could live with that that 24 hour sub dial. And if it had been an actual chronograph alongside of that, yeah, I would have bought it, but being it is what it is, I just I, I couldn't even even at forty bucks that they're trying to pawn that thing off at, I still can't stomach. <laughs> for yeah, that watch. no. That's All right, but, what is it? So what is so, it? Well, let's just. I mean, look at that. This is genuine. I want everyone to know. It's, it, it it's looks not like, a rip off Invicta. <laughs> it looks like Breitling wings. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, <laughs> you know, box papers. Uh, you know, warranty card not filled out. See, so um, the, the value has already increased, box and papers. Hell, yeah. Stop. No more Invicta. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> read. Well, <laughs> jokes on you. I can't read, so. All right. So outer box, inner box. Nice Here text. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> what do we got? What? What is it? This is a vintage Invicta. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I don't know what year. Probably early 70s, so 69. Did, um, you, did you just buy that off of eBay? Recently, yes. I saw that one for sale. Okay. Well, so yep. it, it came on this original bracelet, which is disgusting. I need to clean it. But because I haven't worn it, I didn't bother to clean it. Um, yeah, I've, I've always kind of, cause everyone kind of shits on Invicta and right, rightfully so, but, but the they vintage, have a, they the have a vintage Invicta that those are cool. Yeah. That's so really cool, dude. it's, uh, it's got a signed crown and signed case back. Um, that's, so probably, that's the IV signature, right? Yeah. You're probably not gonna be able to, yeah. So IVs on the okay. crown and then it has, you know, a little fishing wow. thing. That's Man, great, that. dude. And it says That's Invicta. On it. I, take back, I take back the Ronald McDonald watch now. <laughs> yeah, this is why I was like, there's no way anyone's going to guess what it is because I went and bought a new, and, well, it's a used box for $7 on eBay so that I could go, <laughs> I could go do a, a Instagram post. Did thing. you pay more in shipping than you paid for the box? Uh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> um, oh, so weird thing about this. 
Guess what the uh, lug width on this is. 21. 19. God damn it. 21 is right on the money. <clears throat> like, like, what in the freak? Why, do, why? So what's, why what's the case size? I don't know. I'm about to find out. Oh. Is it tool user? Uh, 36 and a half. Wow, that's that's a big lug. That's weird, man. I like that already. I like it even more now. Yeah, so but I, mean, I, I, I love this. Send me, send me that one. Oh really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Um, it is weird though because the, the minute hand no. looks to be painted. <laughs> Buy a Ronald McDonald watch and send him that instead. Yeah. So. That oh well, that doesn't wrap up everything. I have a story to tell about a Marine National genuine issue watch, and I think all of us in in the room in the podcast know how hyped up this uh, Marine National stuff can be. Um, Marine National tutors will go for you know easily seven plus thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, I picked it's up a Marine National for the, for the Marine National markings on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a, a regular run of the mill Tudor Submariner most of the time that just has uh, a very minuscule um, markings that means only something to the Marine National as yeah. they that's how they track their stuff. Well, anyway, so they've used other watches and chief among them is a Casio G-Shock. Um, and I managed to acquire one sub well, five hundred dollars. You managed to pay for one. This is true. I managed to give this man my money. <laughs> this guy has told me so. I win the auction on the seventeenth, and uh, I'm like, all right, don't be an a hole. Just give him time. Give him three days to get it out the door. Well, did three he days pass. He doesn't do anything. I'm like, hey man, you know what's up? Can I just can I get a tracking number? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get it out in the post today, uh, and I'll send you the tracking number. Well, it's the 28th now, as we record, and I still don't have the watch. This is a US to US transaction, um, and he's supposed to be sending it via uh, UPS, so not the postal service. So this should be pretty quick. But uh, so I, I'm going back and forth. I've got a um, an open eBay case against him now, and uh, I'll probably end up pushing for a refund here because the chances of me getting this watch are slim to none. But I actually just got a message from him. It says, Ooh. well, I, I messaged him today. Just, like, like just now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> so I messaged him. I'm like, hey, when can I expect the watch? And he responds, hi, sir. I will be back from Florida. Son of a bitch, Mike. You could oh, get it good. Well, find out where he's at. <laughs> I Mike will be track back from Florida tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to locate the watch and ship it immediately. Monday, expedite. I will upload the tracking Monday shortly after that. I apologize about the wait, message, and delays. I will throw in an extra Marine National medallion. I have to hopefully apologize for the weight and headache. Thanks. Best wishes. I won't say his name. See, now you were just talking crap about the guy, and he's going to throw in some extra stuff for you. But yeah. When it shows up, we can redact all of this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, but talk, so talk about the condition of the watch, though, because there's oh, a reason that's it's good for what it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I got a pretty good deal on it because it is kind of buggered up. It's... uh. I don't know what the heck they were doing, but clearly it was rough. Um, there's a large gash running the essentially length of the case. It looks like it's still serviceable, like you could wear it. But um, if I was going to take this watch out of the field, I'd probably want to replace the case um, for use in the field. So, See, uh, let's, let's this take is moment. what I find interesting <laughs> because you're – a military guy buying a watch with a military history that was probably cracked while in service. 
and you want to change the case. I'm very shocked that you want to do that. I'm surprised I you see, don't want don't, to preserve it for what it is, for the story that it has. You keep the case. You absolutely yeah. keep the case, but you can't wear the watch without it. And I'm I'm with I'm with KC on this. Yeah, wear the watch. No, I'll definitely I'll be I'm, keeping the I'll be keeping the case. But what? if I want to wear the watch, I don't want to lose parts because it's going to fall apart on me. Yeah. My yeah. question. See, it, if it See, was my, me, no, I, I'd though, keep it in on. display, as is. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't like you're going to display it. If you actually use it, though, you know, use your tools. My question is, what the heck happened to it? This is. I, I almost wonder if maybe these guys – I can't imagine it was a very heroic thing. I mean, who knows? I'm it thinking, may not have been, but, but we're talking about a G-Shock with a cracked case. I'm thinking that they were probably practicing. It was training, and – a propeller or something like that comes by. I, I mean, it, it could have been an explosive thing. You know how that works. This is true. Uh, it could. God, wait, hold on. No, absolutely not. He would. He would be missing a lot. Then <laughs> <laughs> you only blow up your phone, Joe, not your watch. Uh, all yeah. we found was the watch. <laughs> the air is gone. Well, okay. So let's. Yeah, maybe if it was a simul simulation kind of thing, maybe you'd be okay. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But, so, speaking of, of military courts watches, um, and, and you can cut this out if you, if you don't want to discuss it, but do you want to talk real quick about the discovery you made yesterday about your dad's uh, watch that he just bought back? Oh, yeah. I mean, yes and no, because I kind of want to do something special for that guy. Um, so, I guess, I so, mean, well, let's let's just say then you, by pure happenstance, came yeah. across the guy okay. that your dad sold the watch to and bought back from. Yeah, I mean, all right. So th it is a slight new watch alert. I'm not really going to show it right now because I, I plan to do a uh, Warrior Watch Wednesday segment on that alone um, because that watch is the watch that my dad carried for my dad. But as a nut, and he volunteered for several deployments. I think he's deployed like six or so times. Um, so struggling artist. This one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, this is the one that he carried for most of it. Um, anyway, so I guess he just decides, ah, uh, no one's going to give a shit about this watch. I'll sell it. You know, sells the watch. Who uh, is like, yeah, um, this is a really cool watch for X, Y, Z reasons that I don't currently understand but i'll research it more but he says this particular watch was issued by the royal marines and has some extra cool military history um and so this guy's super big into to military watches so it was a big deal for him to acquire this and it was worn by someone who genuinely used it in combat so my dad's like well this guy's like hey do you have any pictures of you wearing this in combat and my dad was like yeah here you go and supplied him with some photos. So like he's got genuine provenance with this watch. This is a cool pickup. I totally understand why you wouldn't want to surrender it after you've got it. Well, I come along. I'm like, hey, Dad, what, uh, what happened to the watch in, or in Iraq and Afghanistan? He's like, oh, I sold it. I was like, what the? So he, uh, he took it upon himself to try to message this guy and try to work out a deal again to acquire his duty watch. Um, it was a pretty, it was a pretty prolonged process. The gentleman rightfully didn't want to, to go back on this deal. So my dad had to find a new one that essentially in, in new old stock condition and send it to him. Um, apparently the original strap that my dad had was of some significance militarily to this gentleman. So as part of the deal, he would, he wouldn't send back the original strap, um, which whatever, you know. The head of the watch is what's important to me. So, but what's um, cool about the story is this guy has fairly recently because I, I know who he is. He he's become a listener of the show um, in the last couple of months. Yeah. Um, but really, I think unbeknownst to either one of you, and and so. It, 
I operate the Instagram account. Kai, you you poke in and you make things here and there, uh, some posts, and you you know do conversations and stuff like that. And you were having a conversation with the guy, and my phone was going off. So I'm like, what the heck's going on? So yeah, I click yeah. on it, and I'm watching the conversation as it unfolds. <laughs> It, but what was cool was the genuine shock and excitement that you had yeah. in your responses to him when you put two and two together and realized that he's the guy that your dad sold the watch to. And it, everything just kind of came well, full so, circle at that moment. It was, it was yeah, pretty cool. He posts something. He posts this watch. He tags the show in it. And I look at it and I'm like, oh, wow, that looks exactly like the kind of watch my dad wore. And I'm looking at it and I look at the name and I'm like, oh shit, this is the guy my dad was talking about. And you know, I was like, holy shit, this is really cool. So I messaged him privately. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna feature his so he's a um a prison guard, a correction correctional officer. Really cool story, actually. Um, so I'm gonna go feature one of his watches that he wears in the prisons for Warrior Watch Wednesday. But this gentleman earned his citizenship. Mm -hmm. um, so he's not Just recently, a, yeah. He's not, I guess, um, naturally wasn't born an American. He's not so a natural he, citizen, but he is, yeah. you know, uh, so now you a, know, a, a newly minted U.S. citizen. To earn their citizenship, you know, I mean, obviously, with my mother choosing to serve in, in our military to get her citizenship, it's a big deal, and uh, I certainly recognize it. So it's it's really cool. The guy's a cool guy. Yeah. So I, I just thought that was, that was cool for you to make that connection. Oh, yeah. I, I know I've heard you talk about that watch and, and tell the story of it. And then for you to, to, you know, piece the puzzle together in real time. I mean, that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I just completely random. I don't like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought uh, the, 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 the watch hobby bringing everything back home again. Yeah. Spring bar, bringing people together. We'll Bring, wow. Yep. <laughs> I think we have Uno Mas new watch segment and that would be mr joe that'd be me so the issue for me is i am traveling i am not with my collection so we're gonna have to drop pictures in the other issue that, for me, that's no excuse you could have brought them with you i'm not Ooh. taking seven watches with me in a framed photograph just to what why not deal with your whim you travel light, man. Uh -huh. okay. So here's here's my here's my issue. This is my issue. Brought the dog, but didn't bring the watches. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I did not bring the dog. That was, I didn't you love that dog. dog. I tried mm. to leave the dog. <laughs> anyway, anyway, all of my stuff is things that are coming back from repair. And this is kind of kind of this is one true stuff we've already discussed before. Kind of, but now it works. And I haven't had the chance to actually wear it. And I didn't wear it before because it were okay. So okay. like the, the first the first one that, that's coming back is the Accutron Deep C B. And the picture that we got here has thrown it up on the original Accutron branded shark skin leather. What, what was that again? Shark skin leather. One more time for the listener. Shark skin leather. Oh, leather. I, I, no, okay. I, I have a problem. I'm a diver. I have, a problem. I have multiple problems. There is no problem here. There's Joe. a huge I, problem. I, no. It's a huge problem. It's a diver on leather. That's a problem. It, but, but Joe, Bulva oh. has deemed that the correct combination. Well, and furthermore, I will say that sharks are probably one of the world's most apex predators, and they use leather and water. Okay, but now let's let's talk about this apex predator that is now a strap. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little lower on the apex than the Accutron, apparently. But so I've got I've got this watch. It's back from service. It's running really well. It's humming along. It's a fantastic, fantastic. Did you get it serviced by? I don't mean to derail the whole thing. Uh, I got I got it serviced by a guy that is local to me who does he does you know light cleanings and some Accutron service. Huh. It's like it's a it's a question of he can regulate and and he can swap out parts and he can diagnose, but it's just a question of what he's got available and that's okay. kind of the, the 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 stick because if you don't have access to the parts. 
it becomes a lot harder. And so for, for I had I had two the, both of the both the Ecotrons I had in service. The other one I'm going to talk about next. These are both um, two eighteens day date and just trying to get parts and making sure that the coils work because that's the problem with vintage Accutron movements that the coils just get shot. So you have to try to find that. And so it's a shout out to Jaden Jewelry in Covina. If you're in the in the market, it, he does he does some not real heavy lifting. You're going to have to have all the parts or have them there for him. He's not going to, you know, he's not going to be reconstructing anything. There's some other, other repair persons who will do that, but very reasonably priced. Then the watches, the watches work great. So I've got this watch. If you want your coils rewound by hand, there's a donkey involved. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> got, got the watch. Saw the strap, mm. know that it's original, picked it up, haven't worn it. I can't say if I like it or not. I don't know. But first impressions. Huh? First impressions. Okay. It's a leather strap on a diver. <laughs> okay. That's why well, you pick it up. You must have known. Well, I, I got it because it is it is original. He, he got it because originality got the best of him. Original, it's, it's true. It's true. Originality got the best of him. And, and like, you know, looking for what it is. Now, I also have, however, from friend of the show, you know, Oliver, of uh, you know, watches with Oliver, he gave me a dark gray, like almost a charcoal gray tropic that works really well. It matches up with the dial. It does a whole bunch of it. So when I get to ask you, how do I know? Yeah. I, I put it on. <laughs> I put it on the watch. I can sit there and look at it. All right, boys, back it up. I'm done. All right. He just said that he lost. No, I didn't put he it didn't on put my it on wrist. wrist. I put the strap on the watch. That's how I know. Uh, <laughs> look at it. Uh, Life and and story. Go, go through the feed. You can see it. It's there. So. Oh, God, hold on, God, hold, God, wait, wait, God, hold, before you go any further, there was, I believe, a video or a picture where you double wristed. Is that count as a, a technical disqualification? No, because I still had the watch on. Yeah, but it's a one watch challenge. That's right. I got, I got one watch, watch challenge. On. One watch. You had you had two on. I feel oh, like we need actually, to actually shoot. I wasn't gonna say that. Wow. We need to consult the rule book on this one. One watch. Watch didn't come oh. off. Uh huh. Didn't swap out the watch. I just no. added another. Yeah, exactly, exactly. One watch. You deviated from the rules. You're the teacher, so one plus one. I know I'm not the best numbers guy here. I'm a yeah. music teacher. Yeah, one I'm plus guy to ask. One plus one is two, but one plus point five is still more than just one. Uh, one watch. There it is. Didn't change. <laughs> hey, hey look, look, Joe. We can make all this pain stop if you just. You know, concede. You can try, but I only, I still only have this watch with me, so I don't have much of a choice. <laughs> oh. No, the other the other watch that that came at the same repair time, but at the same time, is this uh, oh. Accutron Snorkel six 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 with a new old stock blue bezel. I mean, the watch it's showed up is not working. So out. good. It's really good. It's yep. really, really good. It's really good. It's an integrated bracelet. I like this one a lot. It's really good. I haven't yeah. worn it. I don't know. Really you did too wear it. This is with you the watch that you double wristed, isn't I it? I put it on. Yeah, I put it. <laughs> it no, like, I still don't uh -huh. this is this is the problem too. This is the problem too, because when we talk about the next one, this even goes into the same thing. I can't double wrist. Yeah, it, it, I don't like it, that. It messes, it messes up everything about me. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. Like, I, I literally stumble around. I can't walk in a straight <laughs> line. I don't know why. It's, it's bizarre. So you okay. look like your deaf and blind dog? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> it's, bad. it's really bad. So, so, moving forward, moving forward. The actual new watch that I've got is this... Uh, orange devil diver it's a 41 millimeter it's the, the new re-edition and it goes with you know all the other ones this sucker though so heavy 
like the, the case is incredibly chunky. It doesn't have sort of the same slim, slim little shoulders that the originals do. It's got some other, some other, you know, big, big pieces to it. It also comes on this, this really great rubber strap, but it's a totally fitted strap and it's, it's a fantastic package. The strap I don't like. Well, I'm, I'm okay with the strap. There's some things though. The watch is great. Watch is absolutely mm -hmm. great, and I, I got it, it. How does it compare size wise to your Euro Diver, the black one, same size? Same size. Okay, but the case is nowhere near as refined. The Euro Diver really? being the Ukrainian one. And no, no, this is that not the Ukrainian <laughs> one. That's the forty-four no. mil. The Euro Diver is a forty-one mil, and it's got the black bezel. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. right, right. So, bracelet different modes. cases. The the case is the case it's finishing. Good. The finishing is is comparable, but the case shape is not identical. Really? Yeah, the the, the shoulders and the, the lugs are much thicker on the new one. So how does it compare to the forty four millimeter case? Uh, obviously, it's smaller, but is it the same shape as that? It's a different shape too. The forty four millimeter case is much more comparable to the vintage case. So what you're telling me, Joe, live on the air right now, is new Bulova is following suit old Bulova in that none of the oceanographer cases are, are the same. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's fantastic. There is no. There's That's no, on brand. No, yeah, it's completely <laughs> on brand. There's no consistency to it. The watch is great. I love it. I still haven't worn it. And we're I had it, I had it on this wrist and I was making dinner and I had to take it off because I could not chop vegetables. Oh, so you had you were double wristing that one too? See, that's I tried. I, I'll it, call it, it a lasted, disqualification here. It lasted about I, I'm with it. Yep. Three <laughs> minutes. Yep, red card. Red card. Orange card. Orange card. So maybe eh, I don't know. I gotta I gotta see. Now the, the funny part about this though. I got also, I got this picture. I got this, this uh, framed picture from the Illustrated mm -hmm. Watch. He had put up a picture that he did of the oceanographer G, which is the black dial, coke bezel, bull of a diver. And I was like, Yo, oh, that's fantastic. Where could I get one? He's like, well, you get it from me. I'm like, great. I want one. I was like, here you go. And a little bit later, I was thinking, could you... Um, could you do it in orange? And he said, that's a great idea. And we talked and we went back and forth a little bit and he sent me in a mock-up and then he sent me the picture. And so you can see here, I've got, got the photograph, you know, images of, of this. And it's a beautiful, beautiful black and white with this bright orange. It's, it's great. But what's cool is he did the, the correct hand set with it too. Did the correct hand set. Also asked me what yeah. day I wanted for the day day as well. So it's, it's, I noticed it's, that. it's killer. It's really yeah, killer. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay. But the case has been done black, which makes you start to think, it's like, what, what would happen if? <laughs> Here's another one of Joe's experiments. So. The answer is no already. The answer is <laughs> next week, next week we're going to find out and I'm going to have the case treated. On the yeah, you said I take issue with your seracoding of that. That's fine. I don't think that that is going to work out very well for you. We I could, will certainly could be wrong. Could be wrong, but I feel like it needs to be PVD. Yeah, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out because the the gentleman that is doing the the seracote, hmm. I, I reached out to a bunch of local um, local essentially it's gun shops yeah mm -hmm. right and they're they're doing all these these treatment issues and it's like oh well hey what about it? it's like sure come over let's talk brought the watch he took a look at it's like okay i've never done this before apparently nobody's done this before so we'll see yeah Maybe we'll you'll, see. you'll have the world's only i'll tell you what though I do think it's going to look cool. And if you want a, a good visualization of what it's going to look like, look at the, the Doxa sub 300 in the carbon case with the orange dial. It, that's, it's, that's what it's going to look it's, like. I think it's going to look, I think it's going to look pretty sharp. I'm sure it's, it's going, going to look, look cool. cool, man. I mean, but I think Mike and I probably share the same hesitancy there. 
things there's, are no, totally... there's hesitancy. I, I don't I don't disagree. I think that the, yeah. the tolerances that are going into a watch case are significantly different than the tolerances that are going into some, you know, aftermarket gun parts. Right. Yeah. And right. And so it's going to it's going to be a question of the threading. And we're you know, we're going to talk about that. more what the masking. Well, no, I'm not I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the durability yeah, of durability. the seracoding versus a PVD. Maybe. Maybe, but we'll see. You know, when you consider like the original PVDs, the the Hoyers that got done, the the Monza and the the Monaco, the Dark Lord, that PVD didn't hold up that well either. But I'm not I'm not too worried about that. It's not it's not that huge of a consideration. I mean, I how much is this process going to cost? Um, I am not exactly at liberty to say. It is nowhere close significantly nowhere close to any of the pbd things so <laughs> let, let, let's go let me let me finish through with the process and then we'll do a full report out on that yeah, right. for significantly cheaper i'll take a sharpie to it <laughs> it, it's almost at that it's no almost because then you're gonna get a weird purple sheen <laughs> right right okay <laughs> next watch next watch is my braille and mm -hmm. the Braille watch I've, I've had for a while, it is a dealer sample watch head, no movement. And we've gone back and forth about the movement and what the movement could be. Mike's got a similar version. Blah, 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 blah. Mike had and, to save. And, yeah. and who, yeah, I had to save it because it would have been, but who was right about the movement? Oh, no, you were, you, were total, you were totally right. But okay, thank you. This, thank goes, you. this goes back to our friend in Japan. Uh huh. Friend of the show. And he's like, hey, send it to me. Like, all right, I'll send it to you. Doing all of that, he, he starts looking for parts and comes up on this mother load of Braille watch parts, which takes us down this other massive rabbit hole. And we're going to do a whole separate episode on that later on talking about braille watches the braille pieces and all the things go with it but that sucker is coming back and so i'm going to have a fully operational new old stock braille watch so you just got to figure out something to do with that bracelet the bracelet the bracelet's going to be interesting because it is a it's an expansion bracelet but it's been split because it had to sit into the dealer sample case mm -hmm. but it's a bull of a branded expansion bracelet so it, it, in a way that i've never seen an expansion bracelet branded before yeah, it's it's like every single link is is branded. Yeah. So it's gonna be really interesting. I'm assuming it's a Spiedel, but I don't know. And we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to see if I can find extra links and try to get that filled out. So let let's shout him out real quick. Uh, so his Instagram name is at. I'm just gonna spell it out because I don't even know how you pronounce it. D G R O N, eighteen ninety eight. D Gron. D Gron, eighteen ninety eight. That's and our boy. He, 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 all his stuff, all his watches that he services and everything is all up there. Like I say, he does all the videos too. So go, go yeah, watch them. And if you want something really serviced, fun. I mean, you can send him the stuff to, to have it serviced. He, he's very professional in the way it's, it's done. You get a, a little card. It tells you, you know, the date that it was serviced, when the next service is due and all that. So I hope he, he does the same kind of setup for you when you get your watch back as he did for me. Cause it's, it's quite impressive. I will I'm, say I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be that way. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It should be coming in the next couple of weeks because he's in the middle of a snowstorm um, in Japan. Mm -hmm. And in Japan, snowstorms are kind of a serious deal, at least where he is. So last one, last one, the return of the Commodore. Do you actually have it in hand? Have you seen no, it? I, since? No, I, I got, I got the message that it was, that it was finished um, as I was getting ready to leave to come up here. I won't, <laughs> be able, I won't be able to get it until next week. So I won't, I won't have it for at least another week. Here's what I notice. I, I'm watching the video right now. Okay. Yeah. The whole point of it going to magic hands in the first place yeah. was that you were trying to fix a crooked lug yeah. and you knocked all the indices off and <laughs> it had to go back to get fixed. But yeah. I'm looking at the video, and the same lug still looks crooked. <laughs> I want to. I want to see it in person. We're gonna have to talk because I haven't had a chance to, to chat with him about what what has been done. So we'll we'll see. But it the the looks like the lugs fit better. It's still it, it's a little bit curved. I'll, I'll take it because <laughs> I can tell the time, and I don't have them all down. You know, you know, there's that that uh that that clock that you see where all the all the numbers are down at the bottom, and this is like yeah. 
<laughs> that's what this watch was. Oh, and my now God. it's not. So I'm in I'm in much better shape, and I'm waiting to waiting to get that sucker back because I really really love that watch. It's so such a good <laughs> classic dress piece. It is. It is good. I'll give you that. But I I just want to point out here, you are the king of technicalities today, Joe, and I'll explain why really quickly. I have new watch alerts. Casey has new watch alerts. The only new watch that you yeah. talked about this evening is the Orange Devil Diver. Everything else we've already discussed before. Correct, correct. And, and to, make, to make it even better, the Orange Devil Diver looks like three other watches <laughs> I already have. And the other technicality is that you double-wristed, and you still claim you're in the running for the one watch championship. <laughs> so here, I, let's I do this. Wearing it. Know. We're going to leave it up to the audience. Not, for oh. real, guys. Seriously. So oh. we make a post on Instagram that, that talks about the episode. Okay, so this is episode 31. There is a post on our Instagram page. It says episode 31. Uh, it'll say something like new watch discussions or whatever. In the comment section of that post, put in there, Joe double-wristed. He had the deep sea on his left wrist, but he had multiple other watches on his right wrist. Is that a technicality for him to be disqualified from the challenge? Put on there, yes or no. <laughs> I'm, curious to see. I'm curious to see how this goes. Uh, let's see here. But I, let's first off, I'm out. curious to see if anybody's even going to do it. Because every time we ask the audience to do anything, they never do it. See, so uh, I'm going to read on a technicality. On yeah. the episode 30, part two, or... No, 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 no. For the, the post for this episode, for episode oh, 31. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, it's not up there right now, but it will be up as you're yeah, listening yeah, to this. Sense. So it'll say episode 31, new watch talk, new watch discussions, whatever. Yeah. In the comment section, on a technicality, is Joe disqualified for double wristing? Because nope. it's a one watch. There it is. Not a one, one watch. watch and an other watch. One watch, right there. One watch. One watch. One watch. One watch. Hasn't changed. I'm calling KC the victor. One watch. <laughs> I'm calling, K and and we're we're going we're retroing this back to the first time that you double wristed. So when what date was that? Middle of January. So you didn't make it much farther than I did. You Oof, I could have been free. Days. <laughs> I could have been free. Hashtag free KC. <laughs> free KC. Free these are Casey. days. Of, <laughs> these are days of his life. He'll never get back, Joe. <laughs> oh my gosh i have so much fun with you guys mm. Mm. Uh, mm. i'm i'm right. looking at your instagram right now because i know you posted a video of when you got that watch back i'm looking to see what date that was <laughs> uh, i can't all right so it. last oh, call. No. here it is here it is i got it uh <laughs> january 7th it was January 7th. You had that watch on your wrist. You lasted two days more than I did. Ooh. <laughs> two watches, two days. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, everybody. For real, in the comment section of this week's post, January 7th, was Joe a loser on January 7th? Nope. Same watch. Didn't nope, take it nope. off. We're leaving it to the audience. We're leaving it to the audience. You got to go back. You're going to have to go back. Fine. Watch. Watch Taylor Youth. January 2nd, January 7th. Watch the video. Hashtag justice for KC. Justice for KC. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm going to screenshot this in case you try to delete it. I got proof. I will. I'm not go. No. I'm proud. I've got, I've got nothing to hide. You're proud of your crimes. Can't, can't um, believe you. Didn't come off. Did not you, come you off made fun of me. Two days. Two days. Well, Two days longer than me. That's it. One week, <laughs> Joe's one week challenge. <laughs> uh, As opposed goodness. to Mike's business week challenge. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. I owned it from the very start. <laughs> okay. I didn't try to play it off. <laughs> so we're rolling into our last calls. Last call. What do you got? <laughs> last call. Um, I have a few pretty short. But I saw this really great YouTube video. They got a couple of them themed like this, but it's testing the different crystals that are, you know, in the market versus your acrylic, your sapphire, sapphire coated glass, your mineral, your hardlex, 
Invictus fire coated fire bending whatever the hell they have. Um, and this guy goes through and he tests them all with the Vickers hardness set. Um, obviously, a genuine sapphire crystal comes out on top. Um, but there is an evidence to show that mineral glass can be worthwhile. But if you get one that's sapphire coated, it was only one Vickers um, difference between that and full sapphire. No crystal. kidding. Yeah. I haven't um, seen that. I'll have to look it up. That sounds great. I'm curious to know how long that sapphire coating lasts, though. Mm, that's a good question. Probably depends on what you do with it. And if it's sapphire, it should be, it, it's got a hardness index as close to diamond. That's what sapphire yeah. is. Everything that's coated wears eventually, though. That's, it's, a, it's a good question. Even yeah. Cerakote. Even <laughs> Cerakote. <laughs> we, will, we will certainly see. We will certainly see. <laughs> So my my, uh, my last call is the vintage watch on holiday and the oh, level yeah. of nervousness that I have with this sucker with me. And it's just, it's, balls, just one of those, it's, you know, what you wear, use your tools, all that bit, but. I'm well, you, little, you pucker up a little extra tight on the slopes. A little bit, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, not going to lie. A little bit. Well, I mean, technically, you lost a long time ago, Joe, so you could be wearing something else right now. Ah, technically, technically, but actually, still a winner. A loss is a loss. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a loser. Well done, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I feel like the only victor in this challenge is I've been <laughs> enjoying all my other stuff. <laughs> what do you got, Mike? Uh, I, I don't have a last call per se. Uh, my last call stuff is kind of going to be part of our, our outro here. So lead me into it, Joe. Well, how can we be contacted, sir? So, Joe Casey, uh, you guys and myself this evening, we make up the Spring Bar Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at the Spring Bar Podcast. You can email us to springbarpodcast at gmail.com. On a personal level, I am 120 clicks. All spelled out. One long word, 120 clicks. Joe. I am Watch Taylor Youth. All one word, Watch Taylor Youth. Casey. And uh, I am Time.Hack1636. So as we stated in the last episode, we are not sponsored by Bulova. However, we are Bulova affiliates. What does that mean? That means you, the listener, can sponsor the show by making a purchase either through Bulova.com or Citizen Watches. Uh, we have special links. You can find those links in our bio. We will also flash the QR codes on the screen. Here's the one for Bulova. And we'll give you a second. Here's the one for Citizen. You can scan those with your phone if you're watching on a tablet or a TV or a computer screen. Uh, and it'll take you right to the respective watch site. And any purchase you make, we do benefit from and it helps support the show. So we appreciate your help if you are an online customer through our affiliate links. And you certainly are going to want to be because you're going to want to check out the new astronaut and the new lunar pilots, oh, yeah. all of them. You want to get, yeah. you want to get on that real quick. Well, really. unfortunately, right now, we're still working on the Accutron thing. Um, different companies uh, doing that whole setup. So we're waiting on Accutron, but we are set up with Boulevard and Citizen. Um, so yeah. If you're planning on purchasing something, go through us. You'll help us out, and we will appreciate it greatly. Until next time that we talk about watches that Joe has cheated on. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, boys. Cheers. I'll beat us in. <laughs>